morning, huh? Oh yeah, good morning, good morning, good morning. And it is a good morning. It almost wasn't a good morning. So uh, we learned, well, I learned a very valuable lesson today. Uh, don't leave load on the telehandler overnight. As it turns out, it uh, drains the pump and it is no longer primed. So I fired up the telehandler this morning and we had no hydraulics, none, zero, zip. First, it seemed like an electrical problem. So we checked the electrical, the electrical was all fine. Then I was stressing out and thinking that the pump was dead, but it wasn't. So Lucas, who is a genius, uh, pressurized the tank with an air compressor and managed to reprime the pump and it fired up and everything's good to go now. So no big deal, everything's good. It was a little bit stressful. So today we're working on beams though. So check it out. We've got some fun stuff we're doing today. Beams! Beams! <laughs> I'm just feeling excited. Woo! We have a bunch of, these are four by eights. These are gonna be flooring joists and we have to- And by flooring you mean ceiling. Well, it depends where you're standing. If you're standing on the roof, they're flooring joists and they're the size of flooring joists. I mean, they're huge. Uh, Y'all have been asking why our beams are so big. Well, some of you have been asking. One of you has been asking why our beams are so big. Uh, I did answer in the comments, but basically I'm not an engineer and I couldn't find an engineer who would be willing to sign off on our project. So uh, I figure bigger's better and the roof has to support uh, quite a bit of soil and water and possibly snow load. And so we just went really big with the size of the beams because we have the trees, we have the mill, we have the ability to do it this big. So we are, that's why, because we can. So why are we gonna have soil on our roof? Oh, we're doing a living roof on the garage. So we're gonna put a, a uh, garden on the roof because then the deer and the hogs can't get into the garden. The only thing we'll have to worry about is birds. And eventually I would love to install a greenhouse actually on top of the roof, on the flat roof. So we will essentially have a garage with a greenhouse. And when we live in the house, you'll be able to walk from the second story of the house over to the greenhouse and pick fruit and veggies and all kinds of stuff. So that's, that's all in the future. So for now, we're gonna take these four by eights, cut them to size, and uh, all right. Okay, watch out, love. So the other thing we did, I'm not gonna tell you what Luke calls it. We wrote down the exact length that each one needs to be. So we have 12 beams that we need to install, uh, and they change slightly, partially because Remember, uh, some of you may remember if you've seen some of our earlier videos, we had some pretty significant bowing. The David Bowie wall. The David Bowie wall, yeah. So the one of the walls bows pretty bad. Well, we had to mount a beam flat to that. Well, instead of putting tons of pressure on the anchors and the beam and all that stuff, we tightened it down, but we didn't like push it up against because we'd be essentially bending, what is that, a 10 by six, a 10 by eight, 10, an eight by 10. Yeah, we'd essentially be bending an eight by 10 log or beam and there's just no need for that. So some of the measurements are slightly off. So we measured each one individually and then uh, we're gonna cut them individually and mark them and do all of that. So that's what we're doing today. Let's get after it. 30 even. What did I do last time? I think I did an eight shy. Yeah. So 130 minus an eight. Oh, wow. No! Minus me, actually. Totally did that on purpose. Oh, definitely. The people and I have not seen you use the monster saw yet. Oh, the oh, beam no. saw? Yeah. Sorry, what? Chris, Chris Chopperson. That's Thank the name you. that some of us have chosen to assign to this. 
Some of us make poor choices in life. Yes. So this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's called a beam saw. And it's literally, it's just so missive. Look at this. It's just a monster saw, but it's uh, specifically for chopping beams. So it's, uh, it's gonna... Lucas, can you catch for me, please? Where you pinching? Eventually, we need to make more of these, but uh, you know, there's other stuff to do first. Should we plane next? Uh, yes. Or should I do the? Should I do this cut? What do you think makes more sense? I feel like you'll have an easier time marking a nice clean beam. Okay. And we had the issue of the planer doing that one where we had to I had to hold the thing up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you won't you won't have that with this. So, all right. I need the power. Can this you? One? Yeah. Thank you. I got the power. Yow! It is windy today. It kind of is, isn't it? So if our sound is horrible, I apologize. I have zero control over the wind. Wow, it is windy. Kind of came out of nowhere. So love, I think the question partly is for you. How much do we do you want these to be smooth and nice and perfect? That looks fantastic. Well, because we can take one more pass and probably get rid of this. I don't, I think it gives it character. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that it's... Because... It's like our walls. You can either put in a lot more effort to get it the last five or 10% well, of the way. It's actually not a lot of effort. It'll take well, two passes. But think about how many we're doing. No, I know. I mean, but I mean, that's that's kind of why I'm asking is like, yeah, I don't think I care because we've been we've been kind of planing them down. And then at least for the main beams, the real big ones, uh, we took the extra time and the ones that were super wibbly, we actually sanded right here. But if we're just going to be doing a bunch and it doesn't super matter, then I do think it gives a character. The question is, do we want character? If one pass is going to be enough. And we'll just know for the rest of these. And the reason we're getting this, y'all, is because uh, our uh, our sawmill, the bearings went out on the blade tensioner. And I saw it, but I was like, yeah, they're not that bad. Turns out it matters kind of a lot. Uh, and so the blade actually was wobbling. And so our boards actually do this. Like when it was getting real bad, they went all the way up to like almost a quarter inch of dip, which is... Not ideal. So anyway, all right. Well, if you're fine with it, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean. You, uh, really? you cannot change your mind later though. <laughs> well, maybe on the house, but. For the garage, let's go with it. Okay. And then if we decide for the house that we don't like it, then we won't do it for the house. Sounds good. <laughs> Remember I said I should mark both sides? I should mark both sides. Oh, uh, this is the top side? Yeah. But that side's perfect. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah.
this is a four by 10. And you, you can see, if you look at it, that it does this, okay. right? We ended up planing it. It is. It does that because of the sawmill. Because of the sawmill. Okay. But we fixed the sawmill now, right. so it shouldn't do it moving forward. We have one more four by 10 that I want you to look at. So yeah, you see our flooring joists? Look at that, the first one. First one's in. We test fit it and it worked uh, swimmingly. This right here, you can see that there is a slight gap and that it touches in the middle. So the David Bowie wall is what created the difference in our length of beams going across. So we need uh, two more four by tens. Over the garage doors. Over the garage doors. This is one of them, Okay. but it is pretty wavy. Okay. Do we care? Because we could take two passes at it and get a l some of the waves out, but there's still probably going to be some wave. Is it structurally a problem? No. Is it a problem? It's purely aesthetics. There's no issue with it matching up to other things, like mm -hmm. other other no. materials? No, it's okay. purely aesthetics. Then I think it doesn't matter. Okay, because I did have the thought. Oh what yeah, I you talked do about is, doing like a crown molding type. Yeah, what I want to do is actually put a facade around this whole beam on the inside. And then on the outside, I thought it would be neat to do a uh, cedar facade on this. Like just nail it straight to the beam. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. And then the garage doors, the only thing that makes a difference on the waviness is the garage door ceiling against it, but that's on the bottom side and we plane that completely flat. Okay. So that wasn't a problem. Okay. So. Then I'm not worried about it. All right. Lucas, can you see any other issues with using that four by 10 other than aesthetics? Uh, by the time we plane it down, it'll be probably like a three and three quarter by 10, but otherwise no. Right. At, at the moment, I think we are getting to the point where expediency, as long as it is functional, is the name of the game. I agree. I okay. want to move. I want to move. I know you do. I want to move too. Very, very, very much so. All right. Well, then we'll do that. Cool. Cool indeed. Number three is done. Number four is done. So we're gonna break for lunch right now. And uh, in our last video, or one of the previous videos, I should say, we mentioned that we started a Patreon. And I feel uncomfortable about that. And I feel awkward about asking people for money because you know people have wanted to support the channel and help us out. And that's amazing and I feel honored. But one of the benefits of being a patron. If you support at this level here, you can actually get access to something that we're gonna start doing because a lot of our really funny, awkward, weird conversations happen at lunch. So we're just gonna turn the GoPro on and just film us talking about our ridiculous ideas that we come up with at lunch. So you, they are uncensored, so they are not nearly as child-friendly as the rest of our channel. But if you're interested in the weird ideas and stuff that we come up with at lunch, check out our Patreon and consider uh, supporting us. You also get early access and some other stuff uh, as a benefit of being a patron. Again, no pressure at all. Hopefully you're learning something. We're learning as we go, but if you feel like supporting us, there's a link down in the description below. All right, we're gonna go to lunch, take a break. See ya. Yeah, and if anybody's wondering, uh, if we know what we're doing when it comes to timber framing, the answer is no. I have no idea what I'm doing with timber framing, but we're learning. 
So if you see us making mistakes, please. It's too late by the time you comment, but well, uh, yeah, for but next time. <laughs> for next time. If you see us making mistakes, let us know. Because uh, we have no idea what we're doing when it comes to timber framing. I mean, I've seen other YouTubers. I watch, who is it? Mr. Chickadee. I watch a lot of his stuff. Uh, the Samurai Carpenter, I've seen a lot of his stuff come up. Uh, I actually learned how to make a joint from the Woodsman. What's his name? Woodsman, I think. Outdoor something, I don't know. But yeah, so we can... Uh... Oh, uh, Pure Living for Life, I learned how to use a chisel and stuff. They're the ones who kind of taught me that. So yeah, if you're wondering how to do stuff, there's always someone who has shown the process way better than I have. Of course, you're filming me as I'm like messing up this joint right now. It, it, caught, the, it caught the green and went the wrong way, so. Sorry. It's all right, that's part somehow, of what. Somehow the camera is always out for the worst one. Yeah. Somehow, there it goes. And this will all be hidden, so. Yeah, you won't see any of this. But uh, yeah. Okay. So what I do is, see how when it's, I, I get a lot on there and I don't put any pressure down. See that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't go. And then when I'm going like this, see when I put pressure, how it all squeezes out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I stop putting pressure and it goes back into the foam. So I kind of go like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can slowly add more pressure as it goes out of the foam. See? Mm -hmm. And that's how you know you're getting it in there good. Just finished oiling these beams. Kaylee helped. Ricky's putting the mortise on that last one that I think we're gonna do for today, and then we're gonna try to get these hung. Number six is done. done. Yeah, I kind of like the rough look. I'm glad we didn't sand it. Yeah. I just I didn't want to do it without consulting you. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I appreciate that, but I think it's... I think we did one pass. Yeah, which it, one pass helps enough with the oil absorption. Yeah. yeah. And this is Heritage Original... What is Heritage it? Original Finish. Heritage Natural Finishes Original Finish. Yep. Let me tell you. It works great and smells amazing. It does smell amazing. Yeah, it smells like citrus. If you don't want chemicals in yeah. your house. Yeah. Well, and you want even, to even, smell if you, I mean, even if you're less concerned with chemicals, it's also just a really good, I mean, timber framing. This is a timber framing wood seal. It is specifically for timber framing. So, again, because of my inexperience, don't do, don't look at what I'm doing because they actually recommend that you put it on. You put it on with a rag, I think it is. So pretty. Look at that. So this is beams two through six. 
Two through six, yep. So, now we get to go drop them in. Let's get after Yay. it. We're gonna do this lickety split, like this. This is so exciting. Look at this. I can, hold on. Look what I can do. I can walk on our second story. That's awesome. Do you see this? It's not too bad. It's like a quarter inch. Yeah, but you got to keep in mind there will be flooring, which will help distribute yeah. the load, and then four inches of foam, which will help distribute the load even more. Yep. And then six to 12 inches of dirt and wood Soil. chips, which will help distribute the load even more. Yep. It so awesome. pretty! Oh my. Isn't it awesome? It's, it's like a real mm -hmm. building coming together. Okay, we can make all that. After this. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. After you're done looking at it. It looks like it. a real building. Like, I know, it there's does. There's height restraint. You can't. So what are you feeling right now? It feels like an enclosed, a more enclosed space. And it's been a long, road to get to this point and i know we have a long way to go but this feels really really good because these are going to be the final beams that will stay in this room for ever 50 years 100 years i mean until until either the beams rot for some reason or i mean there's because the walls aren't going anywhere and so really it's just the beams and even then you can pull the beams off, put in new ones, and put on a new roof very, very easily. But, I mean, this is very exciting. Yes. Over there. That corner? That corner yeah, will be, be your room. will be in the corner. Yeah. Right there. I get a loft bed. Well, there's going to be plenty of room for a loft bed, too, because the ceiling's so high. When our room will be here. Mm -hmm. Our room is essentially this section. It's exciting. Eli! Yeah? Go we'll see your room? What? Go see in your room. Look, if you stand, come here. If you mm -hmm. stand right here, you are standing in the middle of your room. Oh my goodness, so my room's going to be shiny. Yeah. That's going to be your it's gonna room. It's going to be right here. From mommy to daddy. And over to the wall. So, and then um, over to the wall. Yep. All right. So we got the beams in place. We have a lot more to go, but get the first ones in place. It's very exciting. And I'm tired. I think we're going to call it for the day. Thanks for joining our adventure. Mm -hmm.